Welcome back everybody to another episode of the Adventure Bus Build. The series in which we are turning an old mini school bus into the ultimate adventure vehicle with off-grid capabilities, everything we need to travel the country in comfort. And bring the race cars along with. Today marks the start of one of the most important things about this bus. That is, of course, the electrical system. This bus is going to have 12 volt electric. It's gonna have 120 volt electric, so we can run normal house appliances like a fridge, coffee maker. It's also gonna have solar panels. We've got two batteries. We have a 3000 watt power inverter. It's gonna be really awesome. The inside of this bus is gonna be as luxurious as a house. Today we are working on, oh, we're working on mounting the batteries and mounting the new interior lights. Now, the special thing about these batteries, they weigh 75 pounds each. That's not a special thing. The special thing is that they are deep cycle batteries. Deep cycle batteries are designed in a way that allows them to be discharged deeper and more frequently than normal batteries. If you tried to use a normal battery with an RV, after discharging it, a couple of times it would go bad. Whereas a deep cycle, you can discharge it down to about 20% hundreds of times. Each of these batteries are 100 amp hours. We're gonna be wiring them in parallel. So it's gonna be a 12 volt system with 200 amp hours of storage. Now the entire electrical system is gonna go down here underneath the foot of the bed. We've got lots of room, which is awesome. However, there is this heater, which is in the way. This was the old heater that kept the little kitties warm while they were going to school. The cool yet annoying thing about this heater is that it uses coolant from the engine to heat, which means that there are coolant lines full of coolant running to them, which means we have to drain those lines to remove the uh, heater. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice, uh, Oh fuck, oh fuck, uh oh. No, 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 no. Damn it. That was fun. I thankfully found a plug in time to plug it. the battery tie down I made. The bottom box will be bolted into the floor. So that's how that's gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this and make another one and then mount the batteries. And there we go. They're both painted, they're both finished. As you can tell, I added some rubber. These batteries are vibration proof. They are non-spillable, they're sealed. They don't need ventilation. They're really nice batteries, but a little bit of rubber, a little bit of extra protection doesn't hurt.
we now have our two batteries securely mounted, bolted into the bus and wired in parallel. Now, the next step is to go ahead and add the two battery posts and add the 12 volt fuse box. This is a fuse box that's gonna power every 12 volt thing in the bus. So it's gonna power the lights, it's gonna power the water pump for the uh, plumbing, it's gonna power the amps for the audio. Everything is gonna be going through this really, really awesome 12 volt uh, fuse panel. So let's go ahead and do that. All the other systems in this electrical system are gonna get its power and ground from these two posts instead of directly from the batteries. With everything running through here, uh, it should be nice and tidy. Oh, I can't even put the wire in these fucking scissors. box for the 12 volt system is done. They are stapled down so they don't, they're not going to move anywhere and um, yeah. Real quick before we run the wiring for the lights we're going to go ahead and mount the power inverter. What this thing does is it, it converts the 12 volt power from the battery into 115 volt for the electrical system for the appliances. This is a 3000 watt power inverter. It's the biggest one they offer. So it's, it's a baller, baller thing. We've got normal house plugs on one side and a, a positive and a negative on the other side. So it's super easy to install. So we're pretty much just gonna put it down here. We'll screw it into the floor and we'll run a power and a ground to it. We're trying to run these battery cables as nicely as we can. We don't have the cables to connect the batteries to this, the, the rest of the system. So we're using jumper cables just to test. Ooh. 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 All right, so she powered up. Now if we turn her on, oh, it turns I, on. I left her on. Nice, let's, let's good not job. Talk about that. Yeah. So 13 volts, look at that. Watts zero because we're not using any power. You hey, you wanna work? charge your phone? I'm gonna charge my phone. Oh, baby, look at that. You probably can't see, but it's charging. Uh, I can. There. Hell yeah. Our bus has normal house electricity. Now we're gonna go ahead and run the wiring for the lights. Just some simple automotive wiring. A lot of wire running wires, and we're gonna have to drill some holes and studs to get wires through, but um, yeah. Let's do it. Sweet. <laughs>
so all the wiring has temporarily been ran. We're just taping it together and using these buck connectors. All the wires are running through the walls to all the lights and it goes down over here and into the fuse box. Nice thing about these lights, since they are LED, each light only takes 0.4 amps. Let's flick off these lights, connect the jumpers, and flick on the other lights. And three, two, one. Hey! hey. hey. Hell yeah! It's, it's really bright in here, actually. It is pretty good. Oh, that's perfect for in here. It's not too, like, annoyingly bright. Oh, that is literally perfect. Now, the bedroom is going to be pretty dark. Because it's literally just going to have these two lights. Yeah. A little, I mean, it, it's it's lit in there, so... Yeah. Perfect! This is literally... This is awesome. This is, like, going to be perfect for doing outros right here. Sweet! Thank you, Jared. You're welcome. So tomorrow I'll come back, I'll solder everything, and, you know, you know, kind of <laughs> fix this mess, but that's okay. Alright, let's go ahead and get this wiring finished. Everything is now like permanently wired up. It's soldered together. It is, you know, connected together with some connectors so we can remove the lights if we need to. We've got this for the front. One switch controls the left side, one switch controls the right side, and then we've got this for the bedroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and test everything. None of the lights are on, but it's probably because the switches aren't on. So let's turn on the bedroom. A, okay, that works. And now here we have on, on. <laughs> First try, baby. That's so cool. So this is them, all of them on. Those two look good. This one's not on. Even with just those two on, it's like pretty bright, bright enough for this camera to look decent. Cause you guys know this camera is terrible in low light. If I turn on the other one, Oh, that was turning off that one. It's super bright in here. Heck yeah. Um, each one of these lights is a little bit dimmer than a normal household light bulb. They're each 600 lumens. I am super, super happy with this. What I'm gonna go ahead and do now is clean up all the wiring, staple it to the studs, tape it all together, label it, and um, yeah. The nice thing about these lights is that you can also individually turn them off. So if I'm lazy, I don't feel like getting up, I can just turn them off from here. Or I can go, um, I can turn one of them on to make it a little bit dimmer. A couple hours later, I am done. All the wires have been neatly ran. On this side, it is running along the stock harness. There's a series of staples holding everything in place. Enough slack to be able to easily remove things, but not so much slack where their, you know, wires are rattling around while driving. Come down this side, through the walls, more staples, more staples. Down through this stud, down the wall through the stud, through the stud. This will be stapled on the bottom of the stud, but we will also have some 120 volt wiring running through here, so I wanted to wait. Then down over here, down the stud, and neatly stapled right there. Everything is stapled, none of the wires are loose. Everything is really, really good. Uno. Dos. Just this little modification, adding the lights and the electrical system has already transformed this bus so much. It feels like an actual RV in here. And I can't wait to take it on trips, to live in here, go off grid, it's gonna be awesome. In the next video, we are going to finish installing the 120 volt electrical system. We're gonna run the wires, we're gonna wire up the plugs. By the end of the next episode, we'll have working appliances, we'll have, you know, electric going to plugs that you can just plug household, st household stuff in. English, I can't do it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like. I really appreciate it. And subscribe for more videos. If you didn't enjoy the video, please make sure to give it a dislike and leave a comment in the comment section below telling me how I can improve my videos. If you guys wanna help this build, help it go faster, help it go better, help it get better parts, go check out my Patreon. I really appreciate everyone who is a patron. Get excited, this bus is gonna be incredible. Peace out, I'll see you next one, and have a great day. I don't remember which one it is. Hopefully this is the right one. Oh, no, it's not. There we go.